All right, welcome back. First things first, I want to apologize. It has been far too long since I have made a new video. Life got hectic, to say the least, but it appears to be kind of settling back down, so I'm hoping I can make these videos again with some kind of regularity. With that all being said, I was scrolling Facebook earlier when I had a few, few free minutes and saw a post in one of the groups uh, by a member, Pam, who asked about a font technique, specifically the one in this image. This is just a screenshot of the image that she posted on the page earlier. And she wanted this text effect. In the comments, the only post I had seen was a link to a font that looked like the one in this image. If that's what you're after, that's great. But I like more control in my designs. I like to choose a font that I like and then give it the font effect that I'm after. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to pick a font of our choosing, maybe a second one as a second example to show that it's up to what you want, and create this effect, which is that we have a very thin outline on this left and top side of the font, and we have a thick, exaggerated shadow effect on both the right and especially the bottom edge of our font. So first we need a font. I'm going to choose T on the keyboard for text, and we just need it to say something. Um, let's do YouTube oops, tutorial. Might as well. We're going to pick a font that's a little fancier like theirs. I love Impact, which is what it's on currently, but we'll go with my, uh, my old standby, Amanda Black. And the first thing to know with this specific font, and fonts in general, some, some of them do this, you can see there's some overlap in the letters. So if you're cutting this out of vinyl, it's going to cut the O through the T. So you're going to have overlapping cuts, and when you weed, you'll have some weird problems. So if you have a font like this one, the first thing to do is to weld it. We're going to weld this one as well, because again, it goes through itself. A weld. And everything that overlaps will be connected, so now it's all one, one piece, not little chunks. And I'm going to select all of the word group it together so that the whole word is one, and same again with this one. Select the whole thing and group, and now this is all one piece. I'm going to start by giving them color. They're using kind of a golden yellowy color, so I'm going to use this orange color I have previously selected, and turn off the distracting red line. I'm going to make these a bit bigger, so they're a little bit easier to see and work with. You could just zoom in more if you want, but just preference. And your project, potentially. I'm just doing this as an example, so I have no specific project in mind. All right, so that's pretty close. And um, you can move these wherever you want. It doesn't make much difference. Uh, the only real difference is, is kind of personal preference. And at the end, your negative space, the white they have between the two words, will be much larger if I was to place it something like here. Rather than tucking it in closer, you're going to have some negative space in this area and this area, which if you get bigger and bigger, it will become kind of a dominant piece of the, the art. So I'm going to keep it kind of tight, you know, tie the work all together, and I think probably look better, but we could always move it later if we don't like it. So we've got our main font in the color that they use just for, for ease of comparison. And then again, we have a thin line outline on the top and left side, and then a thick shadowed side on the right and down into the bottom edge. So the first thing that I thought when I saw this image was my brain processed is it, processes it as two offsets. So I select both of our fonts, or text, do a regular offset. That's rather big. Let's try uh, 0 0.05. That looks pretty close, so we'll apply that, and we'll give it a kind of blue-green color offset. This one. That's very blue. I'm going to go on this side. You could just eyedropper it, which I've done previously. It's right here. But if you wanted to pick a color of your own, I'm going to do like that. Oh, I forgot to turn off. I'm going to turn off the red light, because I find it super distracting. All right, so now we have our top and left edge pretty well defined, similar to this image. Now we need that right and lower edge 
to be exaggerated for that 3D kind of shadow effect. So again, I'm going to choose both of the yellow portions. I just shift collected, shift selected both of those. And then we're going to do another offset. This one being much larger. I'm thinking probably three to four times the size. That was 0.05, so probably either 0.15 or 0.2. Let's try 0.2 first. That might be a hair big. Let's, let's go try the 0.15, see how that compares. I think that'll be a better fit. So let's apply that. Again, if you don't like the outcome, we can just change it later. But we're going to try that. I'm going to make it the same same out, outline color, that green, and turn off that red line. And then, again, we need to focus with this left side and this top side having none of this new thick outline. So we need to move it down until we get our original offset, and we need to move it left until we get the original offset. So we're going to do shift and right, shift and down. Now you can see we're pretty close, actually, because we're just just inside that original offset. I can change the color on it to make it easier to see for a second. But that's the original offset there in the green. And same on this left side. That The left side is a, the, the original offset. None of this new one is showing at all. So we're really close. I'm going to undo. So we can move it down a little more. Move it right a little more if we want. I don't like little tiny negative space like this, so I could either delete that or I could move it to hide it. I just moved it one more right. If you like it here but don't want the sliver, you can just double click and delete that extra little space. I'm thinking I'm going to move it right. Because what I'm noticing in the image is that the angle of the shadow is decently exaggerated. That we're like the bottom of the D here and the bottom of the D in the shadow has this angled slant to it. So if I'm getting a similar angled slant, like in the B, mine right now is fairly vertical. So I could even go more to the right if I wanted to get this exaggerated shadowed angle to it. Now you can see like the T is coming across, the bump in the B is coming across. We're closer in angle to this one, but that's where the benefit of doing it manually comes over having a font that just looks like this, is if I don't like how much to the right it is, I can just bring it back and be straighter. I could come straight down if I wanted, if I liked this look. But we're going to go closer to that original image. Maybe not quite as much, but close. So we've got a little bit of an angle to our font. I like the look of that quite a bit. But you can see here's where that negative space comes into play that I was talking about earlier, where if this was further away, you'd have a lot more empty space. And with that, we're actually pretty close. If you liked this as your end result, you're great. But there is one more thing I've noticed uh, about their design, which is that they have this cutout around the font behind their text. But they have their background image, and it's consistently cut out, regardless of whether it's on the thick side or the thin side of the offset. They have the same consistent cutout. So we need to give it a background. I'm not going to do a pattern like this. If you if we want a video on how to do a pattern like this, I can share that, um, but not needed for this video. So I'm just going to draw ourselves a background color. And let's do a, a red color. We'll just eyedropper there red. Why not? And put it in the background. And then I'm going to select everything except the background, so it's kind of more in the middle. Actually, let's reselect everything. And what we need to do, because we want this cutout to be consistent around everything, I'm going to group all of this together. So it's all one, one piece at the moment. And do one more offset, which is hard to see in red on a red background. And that's pretty big. Probably that original 0 0.05 from before. Just a little bit to be up. Why did that move? Go ahead. Just that little bit to define it from the background. So that's pretty close. If we wanted to go a little bit more, we could, like maybe 0 0.075. Sure, let's do that. That's probably a little bigger than there, so that's all right. And now we have our simple cutout shape here. And then I like to get rid of these little pieces. I don't like the way they look when they're done. I'm just deleting the extra little points. That way everything inside this line will turn 
white in this case. It's going to cut out the pink and show the white that's right here behind it. So I select all of this, except for the back, or sorry, I select the background and our blue line and choose to uh, subtract. It subtracts that space out. And then it's just preference if you want this little pink piece or not. But if you want it there, great. And if you don't, you can get rid of it and have that negative space. I'm kind of torn. I like the pink on this one, but I also like the way it looks without it. I think personally I would get rid of it. I think that's a little bit cleaner, but again, it's just preference. And now it looks a lot like theirs. They have the white space in between. They, they left their pink right here. So they left that in essence. But I think it looks just a hair cleaner that way. But that is how I would approach this effect. And just really quick to show that it does work regardless of your font. I'm going to do the same thing again in the impact font. Which is probably the font I use the most. Being weird, there it goes. And then we'll do, uh, just type impact font, why not? Impact font. We'll do the exact same thing. Pick our color, get rid of our red line. We're gonna do an offset. This is gonna be very quick because we've already done it. Just to show that the font doesn't make any difference. It's just preference of look. And then we're gonna select our yellow again. And another offset. About three times the width. Gonna move it right and down. Both this outline and the first outline need to be an outline color. We're using the green. I missed this one. Our green. Delete our outline. Now we have our effect. We want to again cut it out of a background. Let's just move this background down. Why not? Drag this down. It messes up our first outline, but whatever. Bit more. Pull this over here. We group all of that together like we did last time. Give the whole thing a little offset. We did the 0 0.05, I believe. And we did 0 0.075. That's what looks nice. Yeah. And then we want to select the background and that little offset and do our subtract. And the same thing. Thin on top, thin on the left, thick on the right, thick on the bottom. If you wanted them closer together to get rid of this negative space, you easily could. Done the exact same way, just closer together. So we delete the green. Grab these. Move those up. Maybe I want them inset itself. Something like that. We want an offset. The 0.15. Apply. Give it its color. Move it right, move it down. Right, move it down. Group it. Give it a little offset. 0 0.075 is when I go to. And the background and that little offset with a subtract. Let's get rid of the red lines are distracting. And now you have none of that negative space. So it's just preference if you want it or you don't want it. If you do want it, keep them further apart. If you don't want it, keep your fonts closer together. That's how I would go about creating this font effect with whatever font you prefer to use. And with that, thank you for watching. Um, I appreciate all of you who have subscribed, left comments, been very encouraging, been appreciative, and just been along for the ride. Uh, if, you, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns about this video, this technique, or any other techniques or questions for Silhouette Studio and the use of the software, uh, please feel free to leave them below and I will do my best to answer them either in a comment response and or potentially in a future video. So again, thank you for watching. Thank you for all the positive support and we will see you in the next video.